This was one of the many moments where Caltech made me feel pressured, exhilarated and then forced to take a step back and realize that, indeed, I am in deep shit. The game takes place in a doom town, overrun by maniacs and demons. You'll get a peep inside the juicy details left behind by the culprits and secondary characters. Whether that be through environmental storytelling or notes, it's surprisingly immersive. Said notes are, dare I say, not used as a crutch here, but an actual narrative device. Mostly due to how they're presented. They're not hard to find per se, nor are they in your face. They're in the main route, but it's the circumstances around them that really got me hooked. Enough of me complimenting an admittedly overused tool though. Is this game worth your time and money? I like it. For everyone old enough to remember Wolfenstein Painkiller, welcome back to basics. Only better. The story as mentioned before is an old classic, but as a game released in 2022, it improves on the genre of superhuman who can die in 4 hits but seeing handily fights the armies of hell and wins. I must say here that the last games I played similar to this were Doom, Dusk, Painkiller and Serious Sam. So there were some rough expectations on what I'd be doing and I can pleasantly say that I was met with familiar and new experiences. For starters you can be aggressive and play Caltech as its contemporaries, however there is a strict balance of attacking and measuring a situation. Every arena and every level, every combo situation is almost like a puzzle. Sometimes it's best to be aggressive as possible, neutralize the enemy before they organize and come after you. Just as common, however, is having to hold a strategic position after you've paid them out of theirs. Knowing which option to pick is the lifeblood of Caltic design. The maps themselves are linear but hold secrets if you look hard enough. My personal favorite part is the usage of height, hands down. Just by adding a few catwalks or narrow bridges, suddenly the area feels twice as big. Because of the usage of all that useless space is now occupied by towers and other exploitable geometry. Speaking of which, maybe all that stuff could make the environment less realistic, thus less immersive, but it doesn't. From point A to point Z, I knew exactly where I was and where I was going. All the machinery, enemies, notes and general gameplay walked me through without saying a word. I can only recount one time that I got lost, not knowing where to go. There was a vent in the ship level, the only one in the game that isn't in a wall, but instead on the floor. There was blood and dead cultists everywhere too, but I bet a had to the head, others had the same issue. Speaking of which, the main enemies you will fight would be categorized as cultists or demons, and it's an important distinction, both for low reasons and for their behavior. The former use guns and are 95% of the time fine with staying far away, while the latter prefer getting in your face. They are also relegated to the more horror focused areas which make up about half of the game. Unfortunately, they don't share any hobbies or interests other than murdering you. Getting them in the same room can help even the odds. Usually, if you look around hard enough, you might find a way to instigate a gang war. Now on more important differences. Cultists poster their ranks a few different ways. There's good old peer pressure of course, join their group and you'll get a set of the worst fashion this world has seen since the medieval period. Or play hard to get and be hanging upside down. Or stuffed in a barrel. Burned in mass graves. Damn, alright. Thankfully we have a drinking problem and skipped our last therapy session. The color of the robes betrays what weapon they use, so memorize and act accordingly. Dull red being the most common, less dangerous, crimson red using shotguns, grey using pistols, and green using sniper rifles. Special mention to the golden bastards that appear maybe four times in the entire game and are objectively terrible. They use rocket lancers and half the time, meaning probably like two times, are hiding in some corner for some reason waiting for you to show up. They don't do anything, they're just in a fucking I haven't played the game in months but still remember exactly where they are because their appearances are silly. It only speaks highly of the rest of the game because no other part of it actually made me mad.
Yeah, as far as enemies go, they're very basic. I know, sitting them on fire is fun, but there are no mascots. The demons, on the other hand, still the show for me. Their appearance brings a shift to the mood and gameplay. More running involved and a stronger inclination on being defensive. There's no such thing as a pussy. Who said that? Traps aren't real. <laughs> you are just fucking gay. As mentioned before, I won't spoil as much as I can, and their chubby movements are low res models are creepy enough to give you the hippie zippies a few times. They're also more prone to ambushes, so if you see any dark, unlit areas, the foul stench of rot filling the air, or you hear gargling and other inhuman sounds from inside the walls, then this stall is occupied and please leave. You know what's great sound design about this game? Yeah, as you can listen, it's crunchy and the music is a blast. The enemy sounds are a bit meh, unless it's coming out of their guns and not their mouths. When chapter 2 releases, that's one improvement I would like, just to bring the human voices up to par with the other sound effects. And you'll get to love the sound effects. Every time you fire a shot from your rifle to someone's head, you'll feel that nice feeling inside your head. Like a rake slowly scratching the wrinkles in your brain. It's one of your weapons sounds as good as the other, which might be why I used the pistol to the very end. Speaking of pistol, as you would expect, you get the usual suspects for your weaponry. Said pistol, a melee weapon, some grenades, a semi-automatic, and a long range option. Caltech also has some bigger toys for you to play with when the enemies also decide to get a little bigger. For all its positives, there's only one negative you can think of, and that would be that it's relatively short. It'd be fine if there was some inherited playability, but just upgrading your weapons through limited upgrade tools, while fun, doesn't really add much to the game time. For now, all you really got is different difficulties. From playing on hard and then once more on normal, it makes the game different enough that you won't get bored of going through the game a second or third time. And now that you know where the enemies are and which situations are a go or no go, the flow of gameplay is very enjoyable. Other than that, 4 hours of the main campaign for 10 euros? It's good, great even. By the pure quality of its content within. Why do you keep drinking milk? If you like those intolerant! For the gains!